Chris Godinas, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I post it up to Facebook and other social media stuff. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other damn therapist for that matter. Boom shakalaka done. I'd like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, BetterHelp. Dot com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They have got over 40,000 therapists working for them. That's awesome. They're very affordable. They have packages that are very affordable. All you got to do is go online, fill out some questions. They will place you with a licensed professional master's level or PhD level. If you don't like your therapist, you just say, hey, didn't click with them, didn't like them. Fill out some more questions. And they'll place you with somebody that hopefully you do. So thank you, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Like I said, I've had lots of good feedback from people using them. So thank you, BetterHelp. All right, so today's question is, all right, uh, how to best navigate with the child? The ex, the narcissistic parent, is constantly negative talking about the sane parent and then also tells the child you act just like the sane parent. Okay, well, it's meant as an insult, <laughs> obviously. So you contrast. I talked a little bit about that in, in working with kids in therapy. You contrast. It's like, you know, I, it's a compliment to say that you're acting like me. If I'm, you know, doing the right thing, then this is a compliment. And you plant seeds and you um, let them know it's like healthy people don't talk negatively to their child about the other parent, period. That's just the way it is. You know, you start, you start, you can't call, you can't call them out as a, as a narcissist. You can't, you can't go straight to your kid and go, look, kid, this person is disordered. You can't do that. But what you can do is what is healthy behavior? What is healthy parenting? How is a good way to parent somebody? Do you ever hear me say anything negative about your other parent? No, you don't. Because that's what healthy people do is that they are positive and they do not say negative things about a child's parent because you are 50% them. So, and that's true. It's like the kid is half them and half you, you know? So you just start doing the contrast and compare. It's like, do you ever hear me talk negatively? No, you don't. And you don't want to. I, I know it's tempting. I know you really want to get across to your kid what a rotten person this other person is, but guess what? The kids will figure it out. They will. And here's the other thing. You don't want to tit for tat. You don't because the narcissist... No matter how low you go, the narcissist will find a way to go lower because they their depravity knows no bounds. So what you want to do is you want to set a good example and you want to do a contrast and compare. And I think that's really important for not only children, but for if you have a friend that's in an abusive relationship as well. It's contrast and compare. What is healthy behavior? Hmm. Interesting. You know, and you let them think about it. You let them marinate with that. You let them figure it out. It's kind of like you start planting the seeds. Well, here's what healthy behavior is. Is that going on in this relationship? Or, you know, do, do you hear your dad saying mean, nasty, awful things about me? Well, that's not healthy because it's not. It's not. I really wish to God that the um, APA, which I know they're not listening, but if they were listening, I would say, Put narcissistic abuse syndrome into the DSM-5, make CPTSD totally, you know, a thing. Also, parental alienation, and that does not just fall under parent-child relational issues. No, parental alienation is abuse. It absolutely is, and it has long-lasting negative effects on the child. So the best way to start dealing with that is you call it out, but you call it out truthfully, but... You never say anything bad about the other parent. You just say, you know, healthy people don't do this. Because that's true. Healthy people don't do that. And the other parent really can't say much about that. They'll try. They'll say, oh, you're, you're alienating my child against me. Well, no, I'm telling them the truth. You know, so <laughs> they'll, they'll try all sorts of stuff. And they'll try to play the victim in court. And they'll, you know, and like I said, document, 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 document. And with the child get them to a trauma therapist like as soon as possible you know and keep that communication with your child going and keep that strong bond going with them when parental alienation really works is when the abuser is able to pull the kid completely away has them for an extended period of time implicitly or explicitly 
you know, lets them know you side with this parent, I'm going to punish you. And so you got to let that kid know you're a safe space. You are never going to badmouth that other parent. That's simply not done. And anyone who does do that is not healthy. So you start planting the seeds, start planting the seeds, start planting the seeds. And it's going to be, depending on how old the child is, it's going to be difficult for them because again, cognitively, they don't get it. The kids don't get it. They don't understand why they're being drawn to the abuser. They don't understand why they're siding with them. They don't get it. And it's confusing to them. It really is, which is why they need a therapist, a trauma therapist, well-versed in narcissistic abuse, well-versed in parental alienation, well-versed in high conflict custody and high conflict divorce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you just start planting seeds, you know, is this healthy behavior? Nope, that is not healthy behavior. I will never bad mouth your dad. And though I will call out the truth, which is that is not healthy behavior. That's not bad mouthing. That's what's actually happening. So do you see where I'm going with that? And because abusers love to conflate facts and emotions. And so for them, emotions are facts. And so because they hate the other person for leaving them, for actually figuring them out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, everyone has to feel the way they do. Well, does everyone have to feel the way some person does? No, everyone is an individual and everyone gets to have their own opinion. The only people that don't like that are disordered. There's another truth without calling out exactly, hey, the ex is disordered. Do you see where I'm going with it? You can get around the issue and get to what you need to say without pointing a finger. You know, again, it's getting the kids to think. You don't want to tell the kids what to think. You just don't. You want to let them come to it on their own but you want to give them the tools to come to it on their own. So it's logic and critical thinking and it's calling out the behavior. Is that healthy behavior? Is screaming at a waiter a healthy behavior? No, that is not a healthy behavior. Is putting down and demeaning uh, a service person because they didn't serve you fast enough healthy behavior? No, that is not healthy behavior. You know, you call it out. You know, is calling somebody names healthy? No, that is not a healthy behavior. I will never do that. You know, I honor the fact that this person is the mother or father of my child and I will not insult them to hurt them. That is not healthy. There you go. Now you're giving that kid things to chew on, you know, things to think about, you know, it's contrast and compare, contrast and compare. And all you're doing is planting seeds. You're planting seeds, planting seeds. Now, some of those seeds, are they going to go to fruition? One would hope. Will they? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on if you get them into therapy, if you're consistent about calling out the unhealthy behavior, and if you are good about once they turn 18, getting them into a family therapist with you so that you can start talking and making sure that those kids are not under their thrall exclusively. This literally, when you go to divorce a disordered person that has narcissistic personality disorder or psycho psychopathy or anything like that, you are going to go to war. It is. And you have to fight like hell for your kids and you have to protect them. And some parents I see, huh, my laundry's done. Um, some parents I see go, oh, it's just easier. Is it really? Because then you come back to me and you complain that your children are angry at you and, and mad and believe the other parent and this, that, and the other thing. No, it's not easier to just give in. It's not, you got to fight for your kids and you got to make sure that if that other parent is doing alienation, that you're doing everything you can to undo it. And that means being open, being honest, speaking the truth, calling it out and not putting up with the child, taking their anger and resentment onto you. If they come home from seeing the other parent and they're angry and they're trying to take it out on you, you stop them cold. Who are you really mad at? I'm mad at you. Really? I haven't seen you in a whole week. So who are you really mad at? And usually they'll start crying and they'll start realizing it's the other parent. So you've got to be consistent and you've got to not take things personally. And you've got to speak the truth all the time to the kid. And that's going to make an impact. So those are my two cents on that. 
All right, guys, on Sunday, I'm going to be talking about cults, religiosity and manipulation, brainwashing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, communal narcissists, because, yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about that. All right. You guys have a great week. And um, remember, I've got new dates for my appearances. So go to chriscodinas.com and look up appearances and get your tickets because those dates are coming up soon. All right. I will talk to you later. Bye.